Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 571. Obesity is the enemy, when a healthy full life is the goal. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about obesity as the enemy to being healthy and living a long life. Last week we talked about obesity and the, and the situation America is in, with obesity rising at a very fast rate, and that didn't even take into account the weight gain that most Americans had during quarantine. So it's even worse than we stated. But I have gone through the factors that I believe, and many other experts believe, are causing weight gain in America. And weight gain to a point where people are obese, which is is literally defined as having a BMI over 30. There's some wiggle room there. If you have a lot of muscle, your BMI probably will be over 30, even if you're you have the ideal amount of fat, and you're healthy. So there's some wiggle room there, but if you're not very really muscly, then that doesn't apply. You have to stick with, oh, I need to be under a 30 BMI. Ideal is 25. Um, <clears throat> so we are not fat shaming. That is, a, of course, a terrible thing, and it has to do with thinking you're better than somebody else because you're not fat or... I mean, this is, this is not that type of discussion. So I want you to remember that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring up the things that make us unhealthy. And I have, there are no financial gains in this at all for me. I mean, I don't, I'm not marching against fast food. I just think that we should think about it when we are eating fast food and maybe limit our fast food intake. Um, one of the things that I think bring on, that affect our factors of eating and affect our hunger is not eating, it's in our mind, it's advertising on television and on uh, social media and on billboards, uh, just trying to make us hungry by showing us really fattening, really tasty foods. And that can literally make you hungry when you're not. So advertising is one of the first factors that I think is is um, I'll use the word pandemically um, making making people in America eat too much, exercise too little, and and just shut them down, make them couch potatoes. So in in our list of the um, nine other things that cause uh, obesity in America, number one is fast food, and I didn't really think about this until I started going to fast food places and looking at the number of calories they now have to put up to show you what you're eating and how many calories they are. And I'm not generally a calorie counter. I'm a carbohydrate counter because carbohydrates are can actually make you gain even more weight than the calories would suggest. So ca- carbohydrates shut down your system of burning calories and increase your fat production. So um, this is a little foreign to me, but I was shocked at the number of calories that people eat when they're eating fast foods. So um, when I I was on vacation, and that's about the only time I eat fast food, um, or when or when Joe and I drive to Kansas City, we always stop at Taco Bell and eat some tacos. Um, I, but when I was in um, Wyoming, we were going to have a chicken dinner that we went into a, uh, a grocery store called Albertson's, and it smelled great, and the chicken dinner looked great, and we didn't feel like cooking in our little cabin that night. So we bought two little chicken dinners, and I buy a thigh, a, 
um, a drumstick and a wing, and then a little thing of potatoes and a little thing of green beans so that you know what we were eating. And the calorie count for that was over 2,000 calories. My daily, my daily basal metabolic rate is less than 2,000 calories. If I eat that and don't excessively exercise, I'm going to gain weight just eating one meal. And I, there are no calories left to eat for dinner. And we always went out to dinner. So that's an issue. I had no idea. Yes, it tasted great. I just left a piece of chicken on there and didn't eat all my potatoes, hoping that that would decrease my calorie intake so I would still have some calories left for dinner. Um, but I don't think most people even think about that. They just think it smells good, it tastes good. It's dinner, it's chicken, it should be healthy because it's chicken. Well, maybe chicken's healthy, but um, the calories are excessive, especially because they're fried. So there's a lot of fat in fried chicken. So uh, then I started looking at all of the other um, fast foods to see how many calories they actually brought to the table. And there are some people that every meal is, a, is fast food. So if you think about it and you're daily, if you're eating um, 2,000 calories a day and your basal metabolic rate is 2,000 and you exercise, you'll probably lose weight. I don't, most women don't have a basal metabolic rate of 2,000. And what that means is if you're lying in bed breathing for 24 hours, you'll burn 2,000 calories or less, whatever your number of calories is. Uh, we figure it on our in-body machine, and it's based on our height, our weight, and the amount of muscle we have because you get to eat more calories if you have more muscle because they burn calories uh, at a faster rate than fat. Fat doesn't burn calories. So if your weight is based on muscle, you get more calories to eat. So that's how we're doing basal metabolic rate. Then if you want to stay the same weight, you add the basal metabolic rate to how many calories you burned when you exercised. And if you have an Apple Watch or you have a fitness pal, you can put that in and calculate how many calories you ate that day and, and how much exercise you did and how many calories you burned. So those are really nice little tools, um, but I'm not sure everyone uses it that way. But a cal And then think, a calorie is not a calorie. I always try to limit my carbs because eating protein is not the, with the same number of calories is not the same as eating carbs with the same number of calories, especially as you get older. We become more and more carb us. Uh, carb res or insulin resistant carb sensitive as we get older especially women after menopause and men after 50 that's when we usually notice weight gain if we haven't had it our whole lives nowadays everyone has uh except not everyone but half our population has excessive weight so i need to back up and say everyone needs to look at carbs and fast food and food that you eat out is usually a lot of carbs because carbs taste good but it's not all about taste. It's about fuel and giving your body what it needs to actually perform that day so you can think, so that you can exercise, so that you can move, so that you can not um, have too little in terms of uh, blood sugar, but so that you can have a normal blood sugar throughout the day. So we need to keep refueling during the day. You wouldn't go pull up to the gas station and put in water, lemonade, or, or something else into your car. You'd put in the right kind of, of fuel. Well, you need to do that with your body as well, or your body is not going to work. It's going to break down. You're going to gain weight, have diabetes, heart disease, and you will have many other diseases that you don't want to take, spend your whole life um, going to the doctor's office, I don't think. And that is something that ends up being your torture if you don't, if you don't get healthy and um, actually work on this, getting the right fuel for your body. So the calorie that is not a calorie, or a calorie is not equal to a calorie in different foods. If you have, uh, I've spoken about, um, I've spoken about insulin resistance before. Well, most Americans have had so much sugar in their lives that they've become insulin resistant. What that means is the more sugar you have, the more insulin you need to actually carry that sugar to the cells that need it. 
So as your body starts adjusting to this, it can't use all that sugar. You're not exercising. You're not running a marathon. It has too much sugar and too much insulin. So insulin is the little truck that carries your blood sugar to the cell. It gets to the cell and it should be able to go into the cell. The insulin carries it into the cell to make energy. If you're insulin resistant, your body says, too much insulin, too much sugar, I'm going to block that. So when you eat and you eat carbs, your insulin goes up, your sugar goes up, and it, it gets taken to the cell and it can't get in. So you may not be eating a lot. You may even be eating after a lifetime of eating too much sugar. You may be e eating uh, <clears throat> equal to what your body should be burning every day, but it can't get in the cell because you're insulin resistant. The insulin can't penetrate. So it just bounces off and it has to go somewhere so it stores as fat. So the fact is you can eat very little and gain weight, gain fat. If you don't eat at all, that's another issue. If you don't eat at all, your liver has a store of sugar because your liver saves your life. If you were hypoglycemic, starving, it rescues you. How does it rescue you? It dumps sugar into your bloodstream so that you don't die. So if you're trying to not eat or if you just forget to eat or if you don't eat breakfast and you haven't eaten all night, then your body dumps sugar from the liver into your bloodstream. Once again, if you're insulin resistant, it can't get in. So it becomes fat. So you literally can not eat and get fat. It is, it's a system of survival. We were not built for plenty. We were not built for uh, food that is inexpensive and that everyone can obtain. We were built for survival. We were either hunter-gatherers or just hunters or fishermen. We had to go get our food. It took a lot of energy to do so. So we were built for that system so that we could survive to today when we use our brains more than our body. This is why a calorie is not a calorie. But let's talk about calories for a second. Fast food is, um, <laughs> I'm going to go over the fast foods and the calories. So if you go to McDonald's and you eat a Big Mac, that's 540 calories. So that's not what I usually eat. I would eat, if I were doing that in the old days, I would eat that and french fries. Well, the french fries, the large french fries is 510 calories. You now have eaten basically over a thousand calories and it's mostly carbohydrate and fat. So you're going to make yourself more insulin resistant and it's more likely to become fat and not energy. So you're not going to feel a lot better throughout the day. You're just going to feel better for an hour or so. Burger King large fries Oh, they're even, they're a little better. They're 434 calories, and that's for large fries. Chicken filet sandwich, if you think you're getting healthy by having one of their sandwiches, it's 430 calories. And remember, this isn't all you're eating all day, and you may be eating two or three different things in addition to the Chick-fil-A um, sandwich. If you go to Chipotle and eat a burrito, and those burritos are pretty big. I could never eat one, a whole one, but it's 570 calories for a carne asada. That's a lot. That should carry you through. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to eat much else besides that. Uh, but, the, but the two winners are Dairy Queen Half Pounder is 800 calories. And Pizza Hut Meat Lover's Pizza, for one slice, and I don't eat just one slice, 410 calories. So... Pretend you eat two slices. That's 820. What if you eat three slices? Oh my gosh, you know, you're eating in one sitting for pizza. You're eating three slices. Then you've consumed your daily basal metabolic rate by just eating three pieces of pizza. Calorie-wise, that's bad. If it has meat on it and not a lot of carb on it, then that's not as bad. Thick crust is a no-no. Thin crust is better. So you will get more of the of the fuel you need and less of the carb that is going to become fat um so that might be an 
kind of a workaround for this. So when I talk to people about fast food, they, oh, I just eat the French fries and then I have a shake. Well, shakes are about 800 calories. So French fries and shakes, 1,600 calories, there's your entire basal metabolic calorie count. So no, that's not good. The other idea that people have, sometimes your, your psychological, uh, your brain psychologically makes excuses for yourself. They, if Most of my friends go to Starbucks, and I think Starbucks is, is really fun as a treat. Um, however, I never get anything that has any sugar syrup in it because that's just a waste of calories. But um, if you drink black coffee, nothing in your coffee, then you have no calories. Great. Black coffee, great. But that is not Starbucks. When you go to Starbucks, they put in sugared syrup, they put in all kinds of creams and, and other things to make it really tasty. I have a friend, a male friend, who has a uh, Starbucks cafe, cafe mocha vente every day. He starts his life with 330 calories. He thinks he's dieting because he's just drinking coffee. That's not a diet, and it's filled with sugar. So carbohydrate-wise, it is it is really way too much. Um, cooking at home or making coffee at home where you're using half and half or you're using milk in your coffee and a little bit is nothing compared to these things. This is not how most people cook at home. They don't have the syrupy, corn syrup-based flavors that they're squirting into their coffee, I hope. I mean, this is a whole different thing. It's like having dessert for breakfast. What that does to most of us is it gives us a hypoglycemic crash about two hours later, maybe three hours later. So you feel worse. So then you need to have, then you go, oh, I need some carbohydrate. So then you eat something else that's bad for you, that makes you fatter, and then you eat the carbohydrate. It goes way up, goes way down. You've exceeded all your calories, and now you're just making fat. And you feel terrible a few hours later. That is not a good plan for your eating life, and it is going to make you gain weight and get fat. If this is <clears throat> what makes you happy, then you need to see a psychologist or a counselor because eating should not be what makes you happy. The taste of food should make you happy, but not eating. Eating is, not, I mean, food is not your friend. You have friends that are humans or dogs or other animals, or other pets. And some of my patients are hooked on Starbucks. They won't give it up. They'd rather be obese. Some of my friends are hooked, or my staff, excuse me, not my staff. Some of my patients are hooked on um, like 7-Eleven big Slurpees that are just sugar water and flavor. And, but it's not really sugar. It's not cane sugar. It is corn syrup sugar, which is even worse, pure carb, and really bad for you. They drink, drink it all day long. They drink three or four of them. And when I say, that is out. You cannot, you cannot lose weight if you're going to continue to drink those. They're devastated because that's their addiction. So I have them <clears throat> for one week. They drink three a day, the next week, two a day, the next week, one a day. If they're successful, they'll get off of it. But I don't make them just go cold turkey because in general, that would give you a headache. Going from that much sugar to nothing or no sugar or low sugar, that's, it's painful. So I try to wean them off. And that's the way you should wean off sugar-containing foods. Now, there's a, um, there's a thought that if you go cold turkey on carbs, you can decrease your craving for them. And it does work. If you can do it, you, you might have a headache for a day or so. But if you, have, if you go through a 10-day detox of carbs and you don't have any carbs or any simple carbs, I am not calling fruit or vegetables except potatoes and, and bananas carbs. You can have fresh fruit and vegetables or frozen fruit and vegetables, but except for those two things, and really all you want. But you have to eat a lot of protein. 
you can get off of these silly fast food, junk food things, and you can then start losing weight. You'll lose a lot of weight in that first 10 days because these all have a lot of sh sugar and salt, which make you retain fluid. So if you think you're swollen, you, sw you swell from salt, of course, but you swell from carbs and sugar. For every gram of carb that you take in, in the, throughout the day, you gain a cc, little cc of water for every carb that you eat in your, in your um, free space or in your uh, subcutaneous tissue so you look swollen. Your face is swollen, hands are swollen, arms swollen. You, you look like you weigh more, you're retaining water. Well, that's a normal thing with people who eat a lot of carbs. You don't want to retain a lot of water. That's not good for anybody. You have to go to bed and let it come off slowly before you get up and do that again. So not eating carbs will decrease your swelling or the fluid that's in your tissues, not the fluid that's in your bloodstream, but in your tissues. So that's another way to make yourself feel better, look better, is to not eat that many carbs. The other thing that I tell people is 25 grams of carb at a time in their diet. So that is ideal. So if you eat six times a day, you can have 25 grams or less, not 26, because your pancreas will overreact at 26, but not at 25. So in this type of diet, low carb diet, you're not starving, you're not craving, and you're not overstimulating your, um, your pancreas to actually make you more insulin resistant. So over time, this is going to make you more insulin sensitive. It takes a while. But it also keeps you from eating too many carbs at once and eating stupid stuff like fast food. You can make food and package it up the day before. When you wake up, you just pick it up and take it. You should, you know, you can have healthy snacks for your kids when you take them to the ballpark. You, I mean, you don't have to buy fast food. You'll save a hell of a lot, excuse me, a lot of money. And your kids won't grow up to be obese. So this is, these are things that you can do to avoid fast foods. And nuts are a really good snack, and they are not high in carbs. So you can take that and have them eat nuts, mix nuts, try to get low salt. But that is always good. They can eat an apple and mix nuts. I mean, I bring a uh, half a sandwich to my toddler grandchild um, of peanut butter and, and bread, and I tr drizzle a tiny bit of honey because she's growing. And she can have that, and she has carrot sticks, and she has other vegetables and fruit like grapes. They don't count as a carb. Your body doesn't deal with them that, the same way. So she does, we don't stop when I pick her up at, infrequently pick her up at um, her preschool. We don't stop and get junk. We eat that that I bring with me. And if I have time for it, you have time for it. These are just a few things that we do in our lifestyle that cause us to um, become obese and make our children obese. We need to stop it. Next week, we are going to talk about the other factors, excessive alcohol intake and the mixers we put alcohol in, lack of physical movement, lack of exercise, um, mental versus physical labor, sugar stub substitutes that cause you to actually gain weight, and stress. So those will be on, on our docket for next week. We will talk about those and how they relate to obesity and what you can do about it. Thank you for joining us. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.